Shavu Atov. To everyone, I'm uh, happy to see everyone here. Although I know that some of you are on vacation, some of, some uh, called me and asked me to make sure that it's recorded uh, because we had a um, little glitch last week. Again, I apologize, but I was really using my phone and not uh, not a, a Wi-Fi router. Uh, but Baruch Hashem, it's fixed. So I hope I'm coming in clear, and I hope that uh, this uh, this week will uh, we can continue going forward. Uh, although on the upside, Baruch Hashem. Uh, Throughout our 21 classes, it only happened once. So I guess that's a good thing. So let's recap quickly on what we learned last week. Last week, I, we started in the middle of Perek Tet Vav, middle of chapter 15. We discussed um, a king called Nadav. He was the son of Yerovam, and he was a king over Yisrael, and when I say Yisrael, at this point in Sefer Melachim, I'm not talking about all of Am Yisrael, I'm talking about Mamlechet Yisrael, the Israel, the Israel side, uh, which is the ten tribes, not Yehuda. So anytime I say Yisrael, I'm talking about Mamlechet Yisrael. Um, and uh, I'll share my map just really quickly so we can, you know, I did this last week as well, but just so we can uh, be grounded so we know where we are. But today we're really going to discuss... Um, we're going to discuss these these kings over here. Um, well, Rehavam passed away, and so did Yerovam. Uh, that was uh, that was over here. We'll just uh, go a little forward since we saw this all last week. Right, so we're going to cover that up. Right now, we are talking about Nadav. Okay, Nadav is over here. This is Nadav, um, and he, all of these kings that we're going to see today, Nadav, uh, Ba'asha, Eila, Zimri, Tivni, Omri, a little bit of Chav if we get there, uh, all reign in the time of Asa, the king Asa, who was, uh, who was a king of uh, Mamlechet Yehuda, which we already met. He was a good king. He did positive things. He eradicated or tried to eradicate some of the Abu Zara. He wasn't completely successful, but he's considered a good king. Uh, he reigned for 41 years, which is a token to a very long, a long uh, melucha, which is a uh, positive. Anyway, during the 41 years of his reign over Yehuda, we have all of these kings. And uh, we're going to start now with Nadav, which we mentioned already last week. And Nadav was the son of Yehovah, and that should already hint to us what's going to happen to him, because it was promised that all of Beit Yehovah will be annihilated because of the way Yerovam uh, uh, was as a king who introduced idolatry, introduced new uh, chagim, new holidays, introduced two new batei mikdash in Dan and in uh, Beit El because of his fear uh, towards uh, Rechavam and his offspring. Right now, Nadab, we know, is going to suffer as well. So, Pasuk Kafei ben Adab ben Yerovam, Malach al Yisrael. Here, I'm just going to unshare this so I can actually see people. So Nadav Pasuk Afei becomes king during the second year of Asa, as we just saw. And he is no better than his father, Israel. I'm just going to go quickly because we already saw this last week. And Baasha, we also met, Baasha was uh, supposedly a, had everything uh, that could have gone right because in Pasuk Kaf Zayin it says, um, we saw this last week. Um, just doing a recap in case those who uh, uh, saw me freeze every so often uh, didn't get this. So Baasha takes over, um, kills Nadav, and becomes king right afterwards. Uh, Baasha uh, uh, murders uh, uh, Nadav. Vaim loch tachtav. And I mentioned, I mentioned last week also that all these kings that we, we are discussing, it's, it's not that they were bad people. You know, they were, they were just kings. They were trying to do the best they can for their kingdom. It's just that they didn't follow, they didn't follow Torah mitzvot. They didn't follow chukim u mishpatim. 
And that's where they went wrong. As far as their kingdom, they were kings like any other king. And the emphasis in our Sefer, the emphasis of a king of Am Yisrael is one who also follows Torah and Mitzvot. Pasuk Kaftet 29, what did he do? He got Kol Beit Yerovam, just like the Navi had said that's going to happen. Kol Neshama Yerovam, Ad Hishmido, totally kills off the entire family of Yerovam, just like Achia Shiloni had mentioned, Pasuk Lamed. Why? Because Yerovam sinned terribly grave sins, and he, um, Bekaaso Asher Ichiset Hashem, Pasuk Lamed Aleph, Nadav wasn't very successful in anything. There's nothing really uh, that we know about him, but he went in the footsteps of Yeruvam. And there was a Milchama, Milchemet Achim, that's Pasuf Lamed Bet. Milchama, there was a war, Milchemet Achim, between Asa, his 41 years, and all the Milachim that we will meet now. Pasuk Lamed Gimel, after, uh, after, uh, after that, Malach Ba'asha. Uh, and he uh, he reigned for 24 years, long time. How did Baasha do? Well, Pasuk Lamed Dalid tells us, Vayas hara b'nei Adonai, also, Vayelech b'derch Yerovam, uvechatato asher echti et Yisrael. Baasha too uh, went astray, didn't follow what he was supposed to follow. And we went a couple of more psukim forward. Uh, so I'll go quickly. Perek Tet Zayin, we're going to start Perek Tet Zayin. Uh, Pasuk Aleph, and now we're going to be discussing Baasha. Now, I mentioned last week I brought a little bit of a pun. I brought a, a dogma from Hollywood, how sometimes in a movie, you know, something we didn't know, or if there's a series and they want to continue the series, they'll just throw in something we didn't know before, just to make things interesting, to mix it up a little bit, and maybe possibly to invent or to create another story. So. So in Pasuk, uh, uh, Pasuk Aleph of the new Perak, Tet Zayin, it says that Hashem actually turned to Baasha. So Baasha, who did bad, we saw Asahara ben Hashem, but Hashem gave them all the, poss- all the options, all the possibilities to actually succeed. Pasuk Aleph of Tet Zayin says, Vayidavar Adunai el Yehu ben Hanani el Baasha lemo, Yan. I brought you up, I raised you up. Raise me up, right? I raised you up and I gave you everything you needed. But you didn't live up to it. And one of the messages we saw here, and I think this is where we got we started getting cut off last week, where somebody said, Why is God, why is Hashem? Um, giving all of these people, all of these kings, the possible, you know, the the, the ability to reign when they, nobody follows in his in the footsteps of, of uh, David of Melech. They're all rotten. And somebody says, does that mean that Hashem doesn't know how to pick them? So I mentioned quite simply that this is just basically teaching us that we all have freedom of choice, that God gives us a setting, gives us potential, he gives us talents, he gives us everything we need, and it's up to us to maximize it and to do what we're supposed to do. Similar to mechanchim, parents. Parents are supposed to raise their kids. Some parents do a good job, and some parents don't do a good job. Does that mean those who did a terrible job means that they they were deemed doomed, doomed from the beginning? No, it means that they were just busy working outside the house. They weren't there for their kids. Obviously, everybody juggles and does the best they can. But basically, Hashem is giving us a very firm and important message. Every king, every single king that took over, that became a king in Am Yisrael, was with the approval of God. Yet, those who didn't succeed, it's because they didn't follow Torah and Mitzvot. And that's what the Pasuk really says. Pasuk Gimel, because of how Baasha acted and because he did not follow in the footsteps of his of, of David Amelech, Hineni Mavirir, Pasuk Gimel, we're in Peretet Zain, Pasuk Gimel, Hineni Mavirir, Acharei Baasha, Acharei Beto, I am going to burn them. I am going to get rid of entire Mishpachat Baasha, just like I did with Yerovam. 
ונתתי את ביתך כבית ירבעם בן נבט. Same thing, that is going to be the conclusion, that is going to be the, the, um, the, the prize, the, the actual um, events that happen to any king that does not follow במצוות השם. המת לבעשה בעיר יאכלו הכלבים, thrown to the dogs, והמת לו בשדה יאכלו עוף השמיים. So בעשה, though he reigned for a long time, 24 years, it was 24 years where he was just a king over the people. He didn't do anything for Am Yisrael. He didn't do anything for the spirit of Am Yisrael. He didn't do anything to advance Am Yisrael. He didn't succeed in any wars. He didn't succeed in his own uh, uh, um, in his own uh, fight against Yehuda, if you remember, he tried to conquer Yerushalayim. He wasn't as weak as Yerovam in the sense of not being able to conquer Yerushalayim. He actually tried to conquer Yerushalayim, and we saw the Asa during this time was very, very smart. He uh, had a treaty with Hadad, Ben Hadad from Aram, in order to open up a front of war, and Bashai to take up all his all of his, uh, his warriors up north, so he didn't succeed in anything, really. He was a king who didn't do anything positive in any way. And, but he was a king, a king of Israel. You know, for 24 years, he must have done something for them. He must have been a hero uh, because uh, he didn't allow Ben Hadad or any other outside, outside nation conquer uh, Mamlechet Israel. And uh, that's how... It concludes in Pasuk Hey, the Yeter Divrei Baasha, everything that he did, Vasher Asa Ugvurato, Haloim Ktuvim al Sever Divrei Hainu le Malche Israel. What happens to him? He dies. Vaishkav Baasha im Avotav, Vaikaber Betirza, Vaimloch Eila Bno Tachtav. And his son, Eila, was a king after him. And that by itself, by the way, should tell us that as far as the people were concerned, he was a good king. Because if his his son became king after him, it means that he was accepted by the people, not by God, not by Hashem, but as far as the people were concerned, he was a good king. 24 years is a long time. He must have been strong enough also uh, to ensure that nobody conquers him, that nobody rebels against him, like he did with uh, Nadav beforehand. So it comes to show that as far as these kings are concerned, they did a good job reigning and uh, um, uh, politically, but not religiously. So politically, Baasha must have been an okay king, 24 years is a long time, but of course, he and his entire family is eradicated by God because he did not follow that. And we learn from here that a, a, a manhig, a leader, one who has the privilege to lead Am Yisrael, it's not about the qualification, it's not about how, um, how charismatic it is. It's not about whether or not he's accepted by the people or not, but it's really whether or not he follows Chukim Mishpatim. Pasuk Zayn, V'gam biyad Yehu ben Hanani Hanavi, Dvar Adonai, Haya el Baasha ve'el Beito, ve'al kol ara asher asa ben Adonai, le'achiso v'me'ase adav, liyot kebeit Yerovam, ve'al kol asher yika oto. So we know already whether Ela will succeed or not. We know he's not going to succeed. So this Pasuk really comes to tell us he's not going to succeed because of his father. Um, although he has a choice too. Ela does have a choice. And we'll see now a very interesting story about Ela. Pasuk Perek Tetzayin Pasuk Chet. During the 26th year, Mishnat Esrim Vashesh Shana Le'asa Melech Yehuda. So Asa is a good king in Yehuda. During these 26 years of him fighting against all the other kings, Malach Eila ben Baasha al Yisrael betirza shnatayim. Only two years. That's all. Also, what kind of kingdom was Eila given? He wasn't given a strong kingdom. He was given a kingdom that his father ruined. And spiritually, there was nothing to talk about. So Ela doesn't have any ground to stand on. He has nothing really firm to, to do. He, he only reigns for two years. But there's a reason why for only two years. All of a sudden, something happens. 
if Ela took the kingdom because he was the son of Baasha, Pasuk Tet introduces something new. Vayikshor alav avdo zimri sar machatit harachev vehu betirza shote shikor beit arza asher ala bait betirza. What's happening here? So, Ela, the son, takes over for his father after his father was promised doom by God. He's a king, and while he's in Tirza, Zimri, some guy, some evet, some servant, some slave, who was a sar machatit meaning a slave that become a, who becomes a general, you know, the head of the tanks. And what does he do? He wakes up one day and he goes and he murders, he murders Ela. He succeeds in murdering Ela. How does he succeed in murdering Ela? What is Ela doing? So interesting. Ela is in the Tirza. It says, Shote Shikor Beit Arza Asher Alabait Betirza. Ela, the son of Baasha. What does he do? He's got a big flaw, huge flaw. He's a drunk. He's drinking alcohol all day. And he's partying. Where is he partying? He's partying at his butler's house. How do I know? It says, Beit Arza Asher al Habayit Betirza. Beit Arza is the butler or the chief of the state of Tirza, which is the palace of Ela. And, Zim, and, um, and Ela is drunk at his friend at his butler's house. Why is he drunk? What's going on here with Ela? So there's another character in our Torah who also gets drunk. Do you remember who that is? Noah. Noah. When does Noah get drunk? Noah get drunk. He gets he gets drunk after. But he the didn't Mabu. get drunk intentionally. He didn't get drunk intentionally. No. But after the Mabul, he comes out of the Ark of the Teva and he sees chaos. He sees nothing. He sees nothing built. He sees a ruined world. He probably falls into depression, doesn't know what to do. So he ends up laziness. He ends up drinking. He ends up drinking alcohol and he becomes a Shiko. Right? He had no options. Noach too could have rebuilt. But he didn't rebuild. You know, that's one of the differences between Avram Avinu and Noach. Noach had everything going for him, but he did not build. He let things the way they are. He was depressed, possibly, over the ruins of the new world. And he gets drunk. Ela is given a kingdom. He's given it to, by his father, Baasha. But he's given also a terrible kingdom. One that he can't do anything about. So he also gets drunk. And Zimri takes advantage of that. He sees what's going on. He says, this is my point. To go ahead and take over. And that's what he does. He goes up to where he is while he's drunk. And he murders him. Cold-blooded. As it says in Pasuk Yud. Vayavo Zimri vayakehu vayimitehu. Not just Vayakehu. He's stabbing him, killing him. And he takes over. He becomes king. We mentioned what that means. So Zimri takes over for a uh, kills, murders Ela, takes over the kingdom. And like we always said, there's always two things happening here. On the one hand, Zimri himself wants to take over. On the other hand, he's really just fulfilling God's, the God's decree, where, where Beit Basha will not survive. So therefore, just like Yeruvam 
Now also, Beit Baasha does not succeed, Zimri takes over. And what does he do? Pasuk Yudbet, Vayashmed Zimri et kol Beit Baasha, Kidvar Adonai, Asher Diber El Baasha, Biyad Yehu Hanavi. The, 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 the Malachim, the seven Malachim, make sure we realize that there's always a greater plan here. Nothing happens by, by chance. Everyone has a choice, and if they choose wrong, there's, there's consequences. Therefore, all of this happened, Pasuk Yud Gimel, El Kol Chatot Baasha, Ve Chatot Eila Beno, Asher Chatu. It's because they all sinned. That's the reason why they all perished and died. Asher Echtiu Et Yisrael, Lehachis Et Adonai Elohei Yisrael Behav Lehem. Yeter Divrei Eila, Ve Chol Asher Asa, so that's really why they perish and died away. It was all from Hashem. But Zimri, but Zimri also has a story to tell. Zimri has a very, very important story to tell. And that's what we're going to learn now. Who is this Zimri? What did he do? The most amazing thing we're going to find out now, if you are attentive and you actually read the, the little um, uh, the, the, um, PowerPoint, the uh, tavla that I showed you, how long did this Zimri character reign over Am Yisrael for? How long did his, did his reign last as a king? Seven days. That's it. He kills Elah. He becomes king. But it lasts only seven days. And we're going we're gonna to reference that in a minute. Okay? Let's read Pasuk Tetvav. Bishnat Esrim Vashev Ashana, during the 27th year of King Asa, King of Yehuda, Malach Zimri, Zimri was king, Shivat Yamin Betirza, for altogether seven days. That's it. One week. While Vehaam Chonim al Gibton Nasher Plaplishti, because we know that's how everything happened. It was by Gibton, the city of the Levim while they were fighting the Plishtim. That's when he took over. That's when he goes and kills Ela. But unlike Baasha, if you remember, Baasha was fighting with Am Yisrael against the Plishtim. Where was Ela? Ela was drunk at his butler's house, while Am Yisrael were up fighting Plishtim. So Ela was not a good king, unlike his father, who might have been a good warrior. He was not a good king. Um, yes. Nahon Sarah, we're going to reference that in a minute uh, about Zimri, the, the name Zimri, where it comes from. So Zimri takes over, murders, uh, murders Ela, becomes king, and all of a sudden, Am Yisrael wakes up. Pasuk Tet Zayn. Vaishma ha'am ha'chonim le'mor, kashar Zimri, וגם היכה את המלך, וימליכו כל ישראל את עומרי שר צבא על ישראל, ביום ההוא במחנה. What's happening here? All of a sudden, עם ישראל, ממלכת ישראל, they wake up and say, oh my God, did you guys see what Zimri did? He murdered our king, Ela, the son of Baasha, the one who is supposed to be king. They don't like it. So therefore, they decide to anoint a different king a king by the name of Omri. Okay, I'm going to go back and admit it, but it's important for me to finish uh, to finish a couple of more psukim, okay? Pasuk Yud Zayn, after Amisel wake up and notice that Zimri murdered their king, and they want vengeance. They decide to anoint Omri, a different king, not from Zera Basha, because we don't, uh, not from uh, Abash, uh, uh, not from Zera Ela. So what happens? Vayale Omri vechol Yisrael imo migipton vayatzuru al Tirza. They surround Tirza. That's where he is, Zimri. And Zimri, when Zimri sees what's going on, Kinil when he sees that he's surrounded in Tirza, 
Vayavoel Armon Beit HaMelech, he goes to the Armon, he escapes, and what does he do? Vayisrof alav et Beit HaMelech ba'esh vayamot, commit suicide. He burns himself while he's in the palace. Let's stop here for a second. Let's see what's going on here. Elah took over for his, for his father, Baasha. He reigned for two years. During this time, he was a drunk. He wasn't a good king. He wasn't doing anything positive. While the tzava, while the army was up in Gibton fighting against the Plishtim, he was busy drinking alcohol, partying in his butler's house in Beit Artsa. And Zimri took advantage of it because all the warriors are out fighting. No one is protecting the king because the king is a drunk. He goes to Tirza, takes over, and kills and murders Ela. When Am Yisrael hear about that, they take vengeance. They decide to um, to anoint their own king. His name is Omri. They go up to Tirza. They surround the city. Zimri escapes to the palace. And he commits suicide. He knows he cannot succeed. He reigns all together for seven days. Very, very interesting. But what we're going to see even more so, that what I can't understand is Zimri is the shortest reigning king of all Malchai Israel. Seven days, one week. He's an anti-hero because this is the first time we're hearing of Am Yisrael going up to kill a king that just anointed himself, right? We don't see that with Baasha or Nadav or with Ela, but we do see that this is not okay. We see that it's not okay, that there is some kind of moral compass, that Am Yisrael, they do have some kind of morality. They might not be following Torah mitzvot, but they do care. This is not right. A king that goes and murders another king, a, a, a person, Zimri, a slave, a slave. We know that he's a slave. He's an Eved. He might have uh, climbed the ranks to become a Tsar, a, a general, but he's a slave. And it's important for us to realize that he's a slave and it's not okay. So what happens to him? The text here that we just read gives this king, Zimri, a lot of psukim. 13 psukim, all about a king that altogether survived for one week. And we're going to see in a minute that Omri, his successor, who there's a dynasty of kings after Omri, he was basically given only a couple of psukim, even though he was a king for far longer than Zimri. Only eight psukim were given to Omri, we'll see that in a minute, who reigned for a long time, 12 years, Omri. Whereas Zimri was given 13 psukim for only seven days. Very, very weird. We saw Nadav wasn't given any psukim. Basha was, how many psukim did Basha get? Not that many, even though he was 24 years. But there's so much meat, so much that the, that, that the Sefer Melachim is dedicating to Zimri, who did a terrible thing. Why is it? Why does Zimri get a significant amount of psukim, 13 verses, and only eight psukim to his successor, Omri? Why does Sefer Melachim treat Zimri as more important, Lichora, than Omri? Such a surprising uh, 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 weight to someone who appears out of nowhere, this Zimri character. Perhaps, maybe a possibility is is that Zimri has an unusual status. I always say here too, in this, in this forum and in many other forums, there are no coincidences. If you go back for a split second to Pasuk Tet, it mentions that Zimri is an Eved. Go back to Pasuk Tet. Vayikshon alav avdo, Zimri, sar machatit arechev. An Eved is not a Mesharet. Anytime it says Eved, with the exception of Moshe Rabbeinu, an Eved is a slave. Even with Moshe, it says Mesharet, Yoshua, Mesharet. We know that an Eved also 
when, um, when all of the uh, generals of David Melech, it says Mesharet, Yehoshaphat, Mesharet. Whereas here it says Evid. What is so unique about an Evid? It, po- it could possibly be that with the text, the biblical text, when it presents an Evid, an, an anonymous character, overlooked onlookers, like Evid Shaul, doesn't matter who he is, but sometimes an Eved is very, very, very important. We just read Parashat Vayeshev uh, in, in, in our uh, Sedra. Who was an Eved that became a somebody? Yosef. Yosef was an Eved. He was a nobody. A nobody who became a somebody. Zimri was a nobody, an Eved who became a somebody. But unlike with Yosef, who was righteous, this guy, Zimri, is known, his cameo appearance, Zimri, she shines briefly, but very negatively. To show you, kind of like Yerovam, if you remember, when we learned about Yerovam also, Yerovam was, uh, was a yatom, and he became a somebody very quickly because Hashem promised it to him. The same thing here. Zimri was an Eved who climbed up the ropes very quickly, but unfortunately didn't succeed and he's known as a negative person. He reigned for seven days and look how much havoc and look what he had done for Amisad. He murders, cold-blooded, a king, Ela, but of course, a kol me'akadosh ba'uchu. Now, somebody mentioned here Zimri. There's another Zimri in the Torah. Do you remember who he is? We read him in Parashat Pinchas. Then. Zimri ben Salu. He was killed. He was murdered. Okay. Yeah. Zimri, exactly. The name Zimri isn't a good name. It's a, a Kanai who, not Kanai, Zimri who does something for himself and goes ahead just like Zimri ben Salu did. There are no coincidences. Obviously, the, in Sefer Melachim, they're trying to show us that Zimri is a no good character, but he had choices too. He had a choice. What was his choice? He was an Eved who climbed up the ropes and he murders Ela. And he's given so much space. He's given so much, so many psukim in order to teach us that there is something that he does very well. He kills very well, right? We mentioned before, Vayakehu, Vayimitehu, we read it a lot. And that's important for us to realize that the Sefer Melachim is teaching us a lot about people, characters. If we jumped into historically what was going on here, we see kings, some of them trying to survive, some of them trying to reign, some of them trying to defeat, some of them trying to take over. And Zimri is no exception. It's mamash melech kechol aguim. It's all about power. That's what it's all about. Meanwhile, Back in Yehuda, why is it that it constantly, the Sefer Melchim constantly tells us what's going on with Asa in Asa's 27th year, in Asa's 23rd year, in Asa's 21st year, because Asa is not busy with power. Asa is busy with reigning Yehuda according to Rao Mitzvot, by eradicating Abu Dazara, doing his best to shine the way a leader is supposed to shine. Whereas in Melchit Israel, it's all about power. It's all about taking over. It's not about leading Am Yisrael. Because none of these characters that we met here are depicted, are showed, are told about as if they were leaders to Am Yisrael. There's no leading here. It's all about takeovers. This one takes over for Nadav, takes over for Basha, murders this one. Whereas with Asa, the first time we meet Asa, if you go back, when we meet, when we, when we meet Asa, it says that he was good. Here, if you go back to Perek Tet Vav, Pasuk Yudalet, Vayas, he does. Vayas is he's doing. Vayas Asa Asha Ben Hashem. Vayavera Kedeshim. Vayasa et Agilulim. The words that are used to show um, the, what Asa did is using words which are verbs, vayas, he has done, he does and he does and he does. Whereas all of the words used for, um, for all of the other ones is vayas hara ben Hashem, or vayakehu, vayimitehu. Everything that they're doing in the Mamlech Israel 
It's terrible. It's all about power. So if I were to ask you, somebody, uh, maybe it was Bruce, I can't remember who it was last, uh, last week's, uh, or maybe it was Menachem, who said, um, why is Hashem choosing these characters that, that never come out to be good kings? And the answer is he's giving them all the possibilities, just like Asa is succeeding, they're not succeeding. And that's why we keep on flipping every time we mention one of the kings in Israel, we mirror it with what's going on with Asa. Asa is getting more year after year. He's succeeding. There's no reason to tell more about Asa because we were told about what he's doing. He's working tirelessly to clear up all of the Abu Zara that was before him. Whereas all of these kings are doing the exact opposite. They're busy taking power. And that is a siman of a leader who will fail. A leader who wants power. A leader who craves power. A leader who does everything he can to take power won't succeed. And this is the message that Seba Malachim is, is giving us. And we can go to our own politicians. We can go to, if we look at all the politicians in the world, those who crave power, who try to do what they can to take over, they won't succeed. Now, success is not measured by the number of years that you reign over, because we looked at Baasha, 24 years, but he did nothing positive for Am Yisrael. Without choosing left or right, the kinds of leaders that we need, we need a leader that does something positive, that reunites, that unites Am Yisrael, that brings only, that brings achdut, that brings us good, you know, good things. Whereas all of the leaders that we've been having are not doing it. If you look, go back to the leaders that we do have that are successful, the success is because of unity. The success is because of Torah mitzvot. Those, if you look at all that, and that's what Sefer Melachim is trying to show us, to teach us. It's teaching us about the characters of the people. They all have the ability to do well. Baasha was told, as we're told in the Psukim here, was given the opportunity by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Just follow Torah mitzvot. Heramoticha, liot negid al Yisrael, Hashem tells us about Baasha. But Baasha doesn't choose that. He chooses power. Asa never chose power. He chose to eradicate Abu Dazara. That is all the, the, the verbs used. Vayas. That is used here. Unlike all the other ones, Vayas Hara B'nei Hashem. They performed for themselves, whereas Asa performed for others. He was doing for others. That is the uniqueness of Malchei Yehuda who, who were successful. Right? If we go back, even with Nadav, Vayas Hare Hara B'nei Hashem. He doesn't do anything positive for himself either. Ba'asha, Vayakeu, etc. So that's important for us to realize. All of these kings that we've been that we mentioned here, starting from Yerovam ben Nevat, all the way down to Zimri, they're no good. Mamash no good. Now we're gonna see now how Am Yisrael, they feel that. They felt that what's happening now is a little too much for them. And that's why for the first time we see Am Yisrael react. They react to what Zimri did. They react because the neshamot of Am Yisrael, they're good neshamot. They just are looking for a leader to lead them. Yesh tzon en ro'eh. Aval yesh tzon. They see something that was wrong, so they decide to take matters into their own hands. They go up to Tirzah. They want to decide, they decide to get rid of this Zimri character who murders a lot called bloodily, and they anoint a king of their choosing by the name of Omri. So Pasuk Yud Zayin starts, Vayale Omri Bechol Israel, all of Am Israel go up because they're all united together to fight crime, to fight what Zimri did. And when Zimri saw this, he decides to commit suicide. There's nothing he can do, it's a loss. So therefore, he commits suicide. Vayamot, and he dies. Pasuk Yud tells us something very interesting, which is I have a hard time explaining it. Because Yutet says, Al Khatotav, Ashekata, La Sot Hara Bene Adunai, La Lechet Beder Yerovam, Uvichatoto Asher Asale Achati at Israel. It's it's problematic because he only had seven days. How much how much what can he possibly do in seven days? Lachti at Israel. You know, he wasn't even around. Am Israel were fighting in Gibton. So what could he have done? 
to Lehachati at Yisrael. So the answer is you didn't do anything positive for them either. Sometimes when you don't do anything positive, you don't do anything, you, it's, it's, a, it's a negative by itself. Zimri doesn't succeed, and and uh, and we and we go and we go uh, we continue with the parak. Pasuk kaf alif. As in that moment, there must have been conflict in Am Yisrael because they must be looking at what's going on in Mamlechet Yehuda. Just like we constantly look what's happening in America, what's happening in England, what's happening in Australia, what's happening in Europe. They too were looking what's going on in Mamlechet Yehuda. Look what's happening by us. We have king after king after king, and they're not successful. What's happening in Mamlechet Yehuda? There's one king who's reigning for such 41 years. What is he doing right that we're doing wrong? And therefore, Pasuk Kaf Alef, Az Yechalek Ha'am Yisrael Lachetzi. There's rebellion all around. They split into two. Chetzi Ha'am Haya Achrei Tivni Ben Ginat Leham Licho Ve'achetzi Achrei Omri. All of a sudden, there's a split. Some people all of a sudden bring a new king in by the name of Tivni Ben Ginat. Don't know who he is. He's a new character. We haven't met him before. But it must mean that he was a known character to them because they anointed him to be king. And the other half go after Omri. Why? Why? Why is this happening? The only possibility is because they too are looking for a leader. They're trying to find a leader to lead them because all of the kings that we've seen did not lead Am Yisrael. It was all about power. And that's, and that's why it says, Vayechezak ha'am. Asher achrei omri et ha'am asher achrei tivni ben ginat vayamot tivni vayimloch omri. Turns out that the rov of Am Yisrael went after Omri. He was the stronger character of both and he goes after and they go after Omri and Omri is now king over Am Yisrael. But there's a question now. Who is Omri? What is Omri going to do? What kind of king is he going to be? Is he going to take the advantage that he has now of succeeding and follow Torah and mitzvot? Is he going to be a good king? Is he going to lead Am Yisrael? Is he going to be the Ro'e, the Nagid Al Yisrael? Or is he going to continue following Bederich Omri, Bederich Yerovam Ben Nevat? Who is he? What is he going to do? If we stopped over here and we pondered, we would say to ourselves, all these kings should already realize that there is a way to success. The way to success is basically following Torah and Mitzvot. That is the way. So why are these kings not, why do they, why do they keep on straying away from Torah and Mitzvot? Power corrupts. Kaf Gimel. Let's read Pasuk Kaf Gimel. Again, we're referencing Asa. And when we reference Asa, we're getting a hint to what's about to come. Bishnat shloshim be'achat shana le'asa melech Yehuda. 31 years already, he's a melech. Malach Omri al Yisrael, 12 shana. 12 years. Betirza Malach, 6 shanim. Vayiken et ha'har shomron me'et shemer bechikrayim kasef. Vayiven et ha'har vayikra et shem ha'ir asher bana al shem shemer adonai ha'har shomron. Let's stop here for a second. First time we're, we're told that there's a king that's actually doing something positive. He's building or rebuilding. Vayiven et ha'har. But what kind of building is he building? Pasuk cafe, that's when our heart sinks again. Hoping, maybe finally there's a leader, it's El Am Yisrael. Maybe finally they can rest. But no, Pasuk cafe, Vayase Omri Hara Be'ene Adonai, Vayara Mikol Asher Lefanav. He was the worst. The worst. 
וילך בכל דרך ירבעם בן נבט, ובחטאתו אשר החטיא את ישראל, להכעיס את אדוני אלוהי ישראל בהבליהם. Another no good king. יתר דברי עמרי אשר עשה וגבורתו אשר עשה, הלוא הם כתובים על ספר דברי העמים למלכי ישראל. וישכב עמרי עם אבותיו, ויקבר בשומרון, וימלוך אחאב בנו תחתיו. אחאב זה הולנו בורגה. We're going to learn about Achav, but let's, let's go back for a second so we can sum, sum up what we're doing, because right now we've hit a new turning point. When we start the next Pasuk, Kaftet, we'll be talking about Achav. That is a whole new ballgame. So let's, let's uh, uh, summarize everything we've learned up until now. Sefer Melachim started with Shlomo HaMelech. Well, David HaMelech passes away, Shlomo defeats his brother, becomes king. He's promised everything. He's given everything on a silver platter. He's given tvuna like no one else. Rak shomer Torah mitzvot. That's all you need to do. And he starts out brilliantly. And he builds the Beit HaMikdash. He is so loved by the whole world that they flock to Eretz Yisrael. Shlomo broadens the, bro- the borders of, of Eretz Yisrael, creates a powerhouse, one of the biggest ma'atzamot ever. Everyone wants a little bit of Shlomo HaMelech. Malka Shva comes in with gold and silvers and everything. Chiram comes and gives him everything he can. Everyone loves Shlomo HaMelech. The power gets to him. He becomes hungrier and hungrier when he sees how much he gains from all of this. And he turns away from Hashem. Kadosh Baruch Hu is upset and promises him that he will no longer succeed in uniting Am Yisrael. How could he? A guy who introduces Abu Zarah to himself, to his, his, uh, his wives. And he says, only Bishchut David HaMelech will you and your offspring have something left? And that is Malchut Yehuda. We saw a small portion. And it's given over to Rechavam. And Rechavam has a choice to make. He consults with the Tzirim, the Yeladim, and also with the Zakenim. The Zakenim tell him the truth. Lead Am Yisrael. Make it easier for them. It's too hard for them. Don't take so much taxes. You don't need so much money. You don't need all the wealth. And Rachavam is saying to Zal, but I want more wealth. I want to be like Shlomo. He's my role model. He's my father. Look at what he had. And he does not listen to the Zgenim. He follows the Yeladim. And he does not succeed. And Hashem turns to Yeruvam and says, Yeruvam, you're going to take 10 tribes. You're going to be a great king. All you need to do is follow Torah mitzvot. Be a great king. Be straight. And Yeruvam, we talked about him a lot, has issues, doesn't have a father figure in his life. He's afraid of Rechavam, not the king, but he's afraid of the kingdom of Yehuda. He's afraid of Beit HaMikdash. And he decides to make up his own holidays. He brings out new areas of, uh, of, uh, of Kedusha in Beit El, in Dan. And Hashem gets upset with Yerobam too. And then therefore he doesn't succeed. His son takes over and Rechavam also doesn't succeed. And we see from there, everything goes downhill. Malchut Yisrael does not succeed to create a leader that leads them. Partly because of the Am themselves. How do we know this? Because when the nation saw something wrong with Zimri, they took action. Why do they not take action with Yerovam? Why did they not take action with Basha? Why did they not take action with Nadav? Why did they not take action, take action with Eila? But with Zimri they did, which means the people do have power. If they wanted to follow Torah Mitzvot, they also could always take action. And that's, I think, another message that we need to realize. You know, kings are kings, but the people are also 
people who have power. And we see that from what happened now with Zimri, which means that we can only bring and uh, we can only uh, judge the kings themselves. We can't just say that um, all of these kings were terrible kings. We have to say also that the people themselves didn't do what they're supposed to do. We have power. We do. And we say that also today with our with our politicians. You know, every almost every night, the past couple of months, when we dive in at Chovevei Tzion, we hear the rioting. Whether it's the right thing to do, the wrong thing to do, it's people trying to take action. Well, Am Yisrael should take action. The religious groups should unite together and take action, not fight against each other. That's never going to work. Yet we're so busy fighting with each other. The Chardal, the Haredi Lumi, the Kippah Suga, the Haredi, the Light Team, the Conservative, the Reform. We're not taking an action. We're not taking Kol Yisrael. What happened to Kol Yisrael? Well, that's what we see here with Zimri. When Kol Yisrael sees something wrong, they get together and they anoint another king only, which means they do have power. So we do need to judge Am Yisrael at the same time, because up until now, we didn't. We only judged, or the Sefer Melachim only judged the Melachim. Hamelech Hazeh didn't follow Torah mitzvot. Vayas Arab in Eishar Vayas. But finally, we're given a little bit of a window to the people of Am Yisrael. It's true. Ela also didn't follow Torah mitzvot, and it's true that Zimri took over by murdering Ela. But only now do people wake up. But they wake up to anoint a king called Omri, who also does not follow. Which means that it's corrupt. The whole environment, the whole area is corrupt because there's no leader that can lead them. Meanwhile, this whole time, we hear nothing about what's going on in Mamlechet Yehuda. Why? Because they have a leader called Asa who must be doing something right. And the Am in Yehuda must be doing something right. So it's really up to the people. It's up to the people. And I think that's the most powerful part of Perek Tet Zayn towards the end, right before we hit Achav, is that as much as we blame the manhigim, as much as we blame the leaders, we are to blame ourselves as well. And it comes, it stems from Torah mitzvot. That's where it stems from. That is the message of Sefer Melachim. It's not just the leaders, it's also Am Yisrael. It doesn't say anything about how Am Yisrael was. But we can only guess that if they decided to choose Omri, then it's on them as well. It's not up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu anymore. It's up to the people of Israel. And I think that's what's unique. And once, once we, next week, we start Pasuk Kaftet about Achav, well, he was a great king in many ways, not necessarily good, but he was a king that we need to reckon with, a king that did a lot. He's not a stam king, and now it, it gets it gets very very interesting. We're gonna be we're gonna be meeting a great navi by the name of Eliyahu Hanavi. Finally, finally, Hashem sees I need to bring in powerful neviim. I need to bring into the mix somebody yashar, somebody who will try to 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 bring to shake up these people. And we'll see if that succeeds. We'll see what Eliyahu Hanavi does, what Achav does. Uh, it gets it gets very interesting. But we see up until now that it's all about choices. So that's it for today. Be'ezrat Hashem, nipargesh gam shavu haba. Wishing everyone a Chanukah Sameach. And enjoy, enjoy the week.